Oh, hello, hello, hello. There we go. I'm here. I just got to turn the headphones up. Good morning and welcome to it. Uh, I am not Steve Floyd. Thank God for small favors. <laughs> this is Matt Want sitting in for Steve Floyd, hanging out at the Patriots Lament. In the studio with me, I got Josh Bennett and the other Bennett guy, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I had to get my name out there first. <laughs> and, and the disclaimer, I am not responsible for the following two hours of radio programming. Neither is any, n- neither is the radio station or whoever owns this building now. Go ahead, Josh. And their views don't necessarily agree with ours, though they ought to. And, and mine don't necessarily agree with... Anyway. Yeah, everyone has the right to be wrong. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> including you. <laughs> I but, do have the right to be wrong, unfortunately, or fortunately. I don't have to worry about it. All right. Well, uh, I haven't been here in a while, so uh, show's yours. I'll, I'll just sit. I know. And, and enjoy. I pay for it. I know. I'm. Um, so I, to see. I was. I just said I was told that sometimes other people forget that it's not that, that it's that it's your show and not somebody. Else. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, thanks for fun. coming in, actually. No Appreciate problem. It. I'm last minute kind of a deal. Um, I wanted to kick off something here with um, last couple weeks ago, Senator Ted Cruz got into an exchange with, uh, uh, what's her name, Feinstein. And they were going back and forth over the rights of guns and blah, blah, blah. And she's telling him, don't tell me. I've been... And she looks like she's as old as the Constitution itself, actually. So she's going on about how don't tell her, you know, what's right and what's wrong. And at the very... There's a YouTube clip of it. In the very end of the clip, the last 30 seconds or so of the clip, Dick Durbin jumps in. And he says to Ted Cruz, who's a Republican, Dick's a Democrat. He's been there forever. And he says, basically, he goes, you know, you claim to be a constitutional scholar. And I know that you went to law school. He said, so you have to know that none of these rights are absolute. No rights are absolute. And that's the end of the clip. So, after that, I heard probably half a dozen times on different radio shows, well, you know, none of these rights are absolute. It's like, you know, that's the mantra now. None of these rights are absolute. So, I started thinking, so, according to, which is not too hard to believe, according to our esteemed government officials, our rights are not absolute, and yet... I'm sure in the same breath, the Dick Durbin would absolutely say that his laws, any laws that they pass, would be absolute. Well, sure, the state mandated them. You got you to sit closer to the mic. I think maybe mine's not up. I don't think yours is plugged in. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's up there. I don't know which one, though. Try that. This one? Try that one. Oh, can you hear me now? Keep talking. Can you hear me now? That's it. The scratchy one. Uh, it's no different than um, the FBI's uh, ramming something through the legislature right now that gives them the right to look at uh, Facebook, uh, er- anything that you could possibly think of like that, your emails, all the way down to like stuff with like words with friends on your iPhone. They're going to start tracking all that. And they had a constitutional skull or come on or come before uh, Congress. And he said um, basically the only thing that came out of his mouth was terrorism, 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 terrorism supersedes the Constitution. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Terrorism does? Yeah, of course it does. Well, protection from terrorism. Well, right. Yeah. Right. We have to protect ourselves from. We got to know what our neighbors are doing. They might be plotting or scheming against us. Which they is really, which is really what Facebook is all about. I, I don't think anyone has to worry about the government spying on them. They just have to have a Facebook account. I'm going to the store now. I bought baloney. <laughs> I little, am baloney. Little little Bobby picked his nose. I mean, you, you just see the most ridiculous things on there constantly. <clears throat> yeah. So we actually 
the founding fathers, the, the people that started the country or whatever, the Minutemen, the people that fought, they were they started a revolution. They declared independence from Britain over rights that weren't absolute. They promised their fortune and their lives over rights that weren't absolute. Well, they're not absolute if they're uh, stood up against the state. Right, according to the Dick Durbin. But is that correct? I mean, just because Dick Durbin says that our rights aren't absolute, yet his laws are absolute. How is that? I mean, if Dick was saying, well, you went to law school, so you obviously know that none of these rights are absolute rights. No, I understand. So I get what you're saying. I'm just... So, and yet, what did, uh, let's look... The guy who wrote the Declaration of Independence, Thomas. That jackass. Yeah, that fool. Self-educated fool at that. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. They're endowed with their creator with certain unalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It doesn't sound very absolute to me. No, unalienable definitely means not absolute. It means only aliens have those rights, yeah. which is why Schaefer Cox went to jail, because he threatened those aliens. He did. That weren't there. Right for liberty is unobstructed action according to our will within limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others. I don't add within the limits of the law, because law is often the tyrant's will, and always so when it violates the rights of an individual. So which is absolute, the law or our rights? If a law violates our rights, then it's the tyrant's will. Which is absolute. I suppose the one that carries the use of force. Aha. In real life, that would be. But John, John, the, 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 John Jay says, At the revolution, the sovereignty devolved on the people. They're truly the sovereigns of the country. They're sovereigns without subject and none to govern but themselves. The citizens of America are equal fellow citizens and do joint tenants of their sovereignty. So what's absolute? The sovereign's always absolute, isn't he? Well, supposedly. But... All men are created free and equal. We don't have any sovereignty with all the laws that Matt Want passes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they have certain small-scale dictatorship. Essential, unalienable rights, among which may be reckoned the right of acquiring, possessing, protecting property. Jefferson, that was uh, William Patterson, signer of the Declaration or, uh, Constitution and Declaration of Independence. Jefferson also said... That government's purpose is to declare and enforce only natural and alienable God-given rights and duties to take none of them from us. And to take none of them from us. Washington. It would be an unjust and unwise jealousy to deprive a man of his rights on the supposition that he may abuse them. Thomas Jefferson. Can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are a gift of God? that they are not to be violated but with his wrath. Indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just and that his justice cannot sleep forever. St. Augustine, an unjust law is no law at all. Yes. Actually, if we were a dictatorship, if you were a dictator, people would view you with more suspicion and watch all of your moves a lot more closely. It's the very fact that it's a free entry government that... Um, you can get away with being a small dictatorship. And people will view it as legitimate. John Locke said, whenever the legislators endeavor to take away or destroy the property of the people, and property is rights, we've talked about that, or reduce them to slavery with arbitrary power, they put themselves into a state of war with the people, who are thereupon absolved from any further obedience and left to the common refuge which God provided for all men against force and violence. So if these aren't absolute you rights... You should get a little slower, Josh. If these aren't absolute... Okay, I will. I'm serious. If these aren't absolute rights, then how would this be a declaration of war on the rights? Whenever the legislators endeavor to take away and destroy the property of the people or to reduce them to slavery under arbitrary power, they put themselves into a state of war with the people who are thereupon absolved from any further obedience and are left to the common refuge which God has provided for all men against force and violence. And what, what, he, what he means there by putting them in a, into slavery with arbitrary power, he doesn't mean like where you conjure up the image of slavery and ball and chain. 
He's talking about what you experience in your everyday life now through statute and code law and regulatory law. You're you're enslaved to every whim of the government. Everything you do is regulated. Everything you do is illegal. If you step outside any of these boundaries, arbitrary law has um, stolen anything from you that resembles a free man. Well, I, I look at the, the slavery statement as as a as a financial one. If you look at um, you know these two unfunded wars that we're trying to get out of, and and who pays for in that? In the new we, unfunded war we're getting ready to get into, and, and how? Yeah, right. But I'm just saying that that I, I look at those things more um, more specifically than you know a, a lot of the laws, whether I agree with them or not, don't. I don't think that they they, they affect the the same number of people to the same amount of detriment as as tax liability does and so when they mention slavery um i that's i more associate it with with the idea of what people pay in federal income tax annually to pay for all of these uh, you know uh Undeclared wars. Well, how, what, whatever. But you know, and it, it's kind of a sacred cow because you, you say, well, we can we can cut defense spending in half and still spend more than most countries combined. You know, right? But, but those it, wars also foster the um, foster the laws that get passed on us that make us oppressed. When you have a war against terrorism or a war in general, it's a lot easier to bring things home that they wouldn't normally be able to do. Like the fact that you can be indefinitely detained without a trial. Right. It was Madison, I think, that said that uh, liberty is usually taken under the guise of fighting a foreign enemy. Liberty is at home, which Patriot Act, NDA, blah, blah, blah. But, Matt, what you're saying about the taxes is correct with... When he says, endeavor to take away and destroy the property of the people, what do they destroy? Your tax, your money is your property. Your property is your property. Your real property. Right. M- money ta- itself Money itself is just a medium of exchange. It's a reflection of your, your property. And when you were saying you, he's not talking about, you know, the ball and chain whip slaves like um, the slaves in the South. That's why he says reduce them to slavery under arbitrary power. You're basically being reduced to slavery. I mean, when you have to work and give your money involuntarily to a government, you're reduced to slavery. I mean, what what portion of money taken from you from your labor is not slavery? Um, as long as it's limited and smaller. <laughs> well, I I think. You know, I think a lot, uh, a lot of these arguments would, would, would vanish if the things that the government spent money on, whether it be local or federal, were uh, of a of a broader importance or a broader benefit to to the people that that have to pay in. So as long as the redistribution is a lot better, it's, it's... It's not an issue of redistribution. Well, sure it is. Yeah, That's it is. all... Absolutely. No, 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 no. That's what taxes, taxes are. Taxes are redistribution. <laughs> You're taking from some Why people... do you laugh when we say something that you don't agree with? Because you laugh. Argue with it. Okay. So, and, and I, know, I know you don't agree with, say, public roads, right? Right. Okay. So, but public roads What are, about the wars you were just talking about, though? That's what we we're specifically yeah, okay, talking about. Yeah, okay, those wars I don't agree with. And and they were, a, I, so I think, in a lot of ways. So the tax getting taken away, right, and stolen from us, reduced to slavery under arbitrary power. Right, and now, and, and that's why, you know, um, when when public sentiment no longer supports the endeavor, then then the endeavor typically goes away. And and so in these wars, for example, now, now because there's no longer the public support of them, now it, it's... Now they're they're getting they're ready getting, to redo a stretch up. of road up there on the Hall Road, and they they did a pretty long stretch last year. They're getting ready to finish it off this year, and I don't see any um, state entity up there doing it. Okay, I don't. What does that? So why do you have to steal money to have a road? I don't understand. Do you think that oil companies to get their product? You don't think that they would maintain that road? 
They used to before the state took it over by arbitrary power. No way. Yeah. Right, but when but Didn't when you, they maintain it from top to bottom. When you live yeah. in a na- when say you lived in a neighborhood and and everybody owned out to the middle of the street. I mean, are they gonna and and I put up a twenty five dollar toll gate between my house and anybody who lives. Somebody at the would end of the build road. a road right around it. Not it, not if it's all privately owned. Then, Somebody, they would figure it, would, it out. Then it would all be. Then we we, we would have pavement. To every and then quarter. all you would have is one neighbor that's ostracized from everybody else. I mean, you assume that everybody wants to use force on each other. Stuff got here before there was public roads. Oh, I understand that. And stuff would continue, especially now. I mean, technology and advancements have gone so far. That it's just a joke to say that we need to have this borough building of the state government to keep us going anymore. Let's use it's, a let's a use farce. a historical example. A historical example would be we had we had a means of transportation before there was roads, and that was the trains. The trains came out and basically revolutionized America. Were they publicly owned? Yes. No. Oh, I mean, privately owned. Sorry, sorry. Yes, they were privately owned, and they spanned the whole when you said nation. Public, I meant own. No, no, I didn't think of. They spanned the whole nation, mm-hmm. right? Because men needed to move product because they wanted to make money, right? So, yeah. yes. wh- where is your historical reasoning that we have to have uh, money stolen from people and given to an entity and redistributed? Redis- yeah, re- yeah, that's the right word. Redistributed. Redistributed doubt into uh, public roads. Why do we have to have public employees do it? The first freight that came to Fairbanks from Valdez was not brought here on a quote unquote public road that the state created. The guys bringing the freight here created the road. And after time, the state took it over and imposed tolls on certain. So they, they had their own means of crossing the rivers, and the state came along and decided that they could make money off of it. So they put up their own ferries and said, oh, you got to use our ferry now. We own the road. State always, always, always comes in after the fact. It after monopolizes. the market is already taken care of it, monopolizes it, and then say, see, look what we did. They always do that to justify their existence. Is their existence needed? No. But to always take over something after it's already been created and say, look what we did. Without us, you would not have what? Nothing. But that's devolving from the original part. Right. That, that's, that's under this uh, presumption that the state actually creates something. <laughs> that's just funny. That's like saying that um, the, the state's over there fighting the war. The state just causes the war and sends the people there. They didn't produce any of the arms. They didn't uh, make any of the money to fight the war. They didn't. They didn't produce men out of thin air. It's one hundred percent citizen that's over there. We made all the arms. We supplied all the manpower. We supplied every last aspect of that. And then you turn around and say, "Well, we couldn't fight that war without the state wasting millions and billions of dollars." No, it's a good point. We. Couldn't have fought. We wouldn't have. Oh, well, we the wouldn't war. have. I'm not. I'm just saying. You know, the idea is that we couldn't have. We would definitely know we wouldn't have. We definitely wouldn't all be screaming how we need to kill um, yellow people because we're about out of brown people to kill. Yeah, that is a problem. I spent the whole week arguing on forum after forum, and it seems like every Christian in America thinks we need to turn that place into glass. They I must heard. not know it's not made out of sand like all the other brown places. Yeah, it'll just be like burnt, burnt trees. I heard they want to have a nuke. Let's send them one of ours. Go, Jesus. <laughs> this one's from Jesus, baby. Yeah, Boom. What would, you, what would Jesus do? <laughs> He'd nuke them till they glowed. <laughs> yeah. They, you know, Their eyes are already That's yellow, why Jesus so was born during the Roman times. That way he, because he knew he needed to be protected by the ultimate state. <laughs> the state of Rome. I've heard that just this last week. We need to go over there and show them that they can't act like this. So it's funny when North Korea rattles their saber a little bit, it's aggression. When we send B-2 bombers over them, it's deterrence. Of course, Josh. So when anyone else rattles the sabers or acts like, you know, hey, we can defend ourselves, it's like, can you believe how aggressive those people are? Let's send over a few, yeah. While you're having war games in their backyard with the most powerful fleet in the world, the 7th Fleet, 
and you're doing live fire operations in their backyard. You're flying B-52 bombers, which are nuclear bombers, B-2 bombers, which are nuclear bombers, and also are capable of dropping MOAB, the 30,000-pound bunker buster, and F-22s. So you're showing all your muscle 10,000 miles from where your country is in someone else's backyard, and you're being defensive and they're being aggressive. You're deterring the situation. We just need to nuke them, Josh. Well, and we should, because that would kill Kim Jong-un. Because they only have enough technology to light up about two square miles of uh, North Korea, but they're going to nuke us if we don't nuke them first. Yeah, that's true. They, they're going to nuke everywhere. Have you ever seen a picture from satellite view at night? I've, I watched this one time. It shows the Koreas, and they delineate, you know, with the little line where the Koreas are. In North Korea, there's one light, and it's in uh, Pyongyang, whatever it's called. In the capital. Just a, in the capital, there's a little bit of a light. South Korea is lit up from the top to the bottom. And yet, we have to worry about North Korea and all their advancements destroying it'll, us, it'll, knocking us off the face of the earth. It'll, it'll disrupt the shipment of cell phones to us. <laughs> yeah. We can't have that. Are you insane? Well, they do. They had better think about what's going on because North Korea does have the capability of lighting up Seoul. There's no doubt. But one thing that I know that dictators usually love is power and their own life. They're not usually, I mean, despite what we're always told, they're suicidal. No, they're not. Hardly, I never, I can't think of any time in the last hundred years at least where a dictator that's in, been, been in supreme control has shot himself. That's usually, that's suicidal. No, they don't. They try to last as long as they can and pass it on to their, Is the, the next junk meal. lines open? It should be. No. Nope. I think we have to. There. Now they are. Hey, no, we don't take calls anyway, so it wasn't, bu- it wasn't busy all. It was, it was just. Oh. Anyway. My, my coffee hasn't kicked in. I'm tired. <laughs> I think you just feel like you got spanked because you wanted to take taxes from people and have a I, good excuse. Geez, geez. Back to the. But how would they build the roads? Back Josh? to the original thing, though, with these absolute rights. There is going to come a time very soon where we have to decide whether our rights literally are, because government's debating this right now. Are our rights absolute or not? Or is it just that whatever law they pass is absolute? And it comes down to what you said, Aaron force. Whoever has the most force, they're the ones that are right. Their their laws are not absolute laws. If they were, they couldn't be changed. Right. So you can have a law, and today it's absolute. It's just like over here um, by where I work. Just in the last few months, they put a stop sign up. Never been one there. You just kind of flow back and forth because it's kind of in someone's, uh, in their yard, their truck yard. So the state decided to put a stop sign there. So for, see, I think I've lived here 11 or 12 years now, 11 years maybe. For 10 of those years, there was no stop sign. You could freely just drive through this lot. Never saw an accident there ever in my life. Now there's a stop sign there. And now I see a DOT cop, and he's parked behind the trailers all the time, watching to see if one of my trucks or one of their trucks goes through the stop sign to break their absolute law of thou shalt stop whether there's anyone there or not. So this guy's getting paid who knows how much, and he's hiding. I mean, I've watched him. I even called and talked to him about it. He's hiding behind the trailer watching. Are they going to stop? Are they going to stop this time? Ooh, I'm going to catch him. I'm going to catch him. But for however long that road's been there, it's probably been there 50 years. Never had a stop sign. Never had an accident. But now the law is absolute that you must stop there. It's silly. And tomorrow... This absolute law could be taken away if the state decided, you know what, this is kind of waste time. They pull the stop sign out. So that absolute law is no longer an absolute law anymore. It's just like cell phone when you're texting or whatever. A year ago, the absolute law said it was okay to text. Now. It, it, didn't, it didn't say okay to text. It just didn't explicitly. Right. It, it didn't explicitly, explicitly forbid, forbid it. Forbid it. But then once once the danger. Now it's an absolute law. Right, because the, because the danger has, or the, the occurrence of accidents has grown enough to where they feel there is a necessity for it. Oh, bull. It's all for arbitrary power to reduce us to slavery. 
I text all the time when I'm driving. Uh, me too. Exactly. <laughs> And but, I've never but hurt I, but anyone have, while I was doing it. So how is this arbitrary law? Not right, yet. Not yet. Not so yet. Let's pass how many laws, laws do we have that are not yet laws? Oh, and they're, man. And they're absolute laws. Sure they are. Hey, like I said the other day, they need to just put everybody on buses and wear <laughs> helmets <Yep>. and, and, <laughs> and, and, and not worry about Don't it. Don't you wear a helmet patch. anyway? I should. <laughs> I'm supposed to, but the metal plate in my head protects me pretty good. So, you want to take this call? Yeah. Yeah. Call, are you there? Hello? I think it's that one. No, it's this one. It's this phone. Oh, wait. Here, I got to do this. Yep. Call, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Winston. Hey, Winston. Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, 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 I wanted to, to clarify one thing. Uh, 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 the Alaska Railroad is the only railroad in the United States that was built by the federal government. Hey, Winston, I, I don't mean to cut into you, but let me put you on hold for one second, okay? Yeah, go for it. It's all target and opportunity. I got to do Fox News at the bottom of the hour. That's right. All right, we're back. Uh, Winston, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. All right, thanks for holding. I had to do bottom of the hour news. Back I understood, to it. Understood. Go right ahead. Yeah, of 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 the Alaska Railroad is the only railroad that was that was built by the federal government. Of of um, um, all the rest of them were built privately. Now the federal government over the years, I mean, they went in there and they uh, uh, uh they federalized them every now and then. But uh, uh, um, uh, railroads have always been private business. Uh, I just like just wanted to clarify that. The thing about Korea uh, is, if uh, 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 if they went ahead and finished the job, which they didn't have no business being there in the first place, but if they went ahead and finished the job in the first place, uh, uh, it wouldn't be going on now. You mean if we would have let MacArthur finish what he started in Chun? Right, right. I mean, he was already up to the uh, to the Chinese border. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, it's sort of like people talk about the war with Mexico. I mean, we went all the way, uh, uh, we made a, a purchase from from Mexico. Well, we had already went all the way to Mexico City. We owned everything north of Mexico City if we wanted it. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, 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 a lot of this stuff is just you know fallacious. But if you end, if you take care of business and end the war, like if we would have ended the Korean War with absolute victory, then we wouldn't have a continuing crisis to worry about and keep the American that's, people that's exactly about it. for the rest of the uh, next 60 years. Yeah, uh, 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 I, I firmly believe that it was fought under the United Nations, and they didn't want it to, to stop. They wanted to keep a crisis available. Uh, it's, it's, it, it, the lines were drawn at the end of World War II, knowing that we would be there in a few years, having another war right. in the first place. And it was right. all and, and, and that was a, a, the same plan all the whole time. Uh, keep crisis going. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, I, I don't communicate well over the radio, uh, uh, over the telephone, so uh, I'll let y'all go. And uh, uh, I, I really enjoy what y'all do. Thanks, Winston. And yeah. we uh, always love it when you call in because you've always got a great point. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Obviously because you read books. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Talk to you later. All right. Also, you know, the uh, Alaska Railroad also runs a deficit every single stinking year. Call, call, are you there? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, is it me? Yep. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, yeah. Love the Alaska Railroad Corporation. I don't know if they necessarily they didn't lose any money as long as they got enough business. And you know, it's like any 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 organization when you're rolling in dough, or you're rolling in dough. But I really, I really like wanted to. You guys were talking about right and rights. And I'm pretty sure that. Um, what is it? Might makes right. So whoever is the mightiest makes things right. And you know, I'm 
I'm really disappointed with a lot of these Democrats who are saying, like, disarm, disarm. Hello? <laughs> um, you know, I'm just waiting for for the day, eventually, when, uh, you know, these foreign forces will start invading states like Connecticut or whatever. But, I mean, if these congressmen or these presidents or these vice presidents who are actually advocating disarming American citizens, I really think you should look at, like, treason or some... I mean, I really just feel that it's unconstitutional, like, they're really out of their mind to want to disarm our country, disarm our people. Um, one of the things you, <laughs> thanks for the call when you said might makes right it's kind of interesting we've talked about Etienne Delavuete when he wrote the discourse on voluntary servitude what was his whole point is that the might is in the power of the people they don't have the power the state only has what so many people working for him versus 300 million people right it kind of answers um, Matt's question there that uh, anything that is inflicted on the people is inflicted themselves. Right, because we allow everything that happens, we've allowed to happen. Right, if uh, Matt was was a dictator, he would still only have two arms and two hands and two legs, and any oppression that he pushed out from himself onto people... Would be doled out by thousands of minions. Exactly. Exactly. And by minions, I mean the little yellow guys. On. <laughs> hey, we nuke yellow guys. <laughs> well... Hopefully. Twinkies with eyes. Ready for the next call? Yeah, let's take the hotline. See who the heck dares call that one. You just hung up on him. Dude, you gotta you gotta hit the one below it. Oh, see? Rookies. Caller, are you there? Hello? Go ahead, you're on the air. I have a question about the road. If not for the state and their force, where would we get the money to build the road? People would voluntarily build them. Pave them and everything from house to house. Okay, how about this? If it takes force and violence, why do you need it? You don't need it, but are you going to go out there and you're going to forcefully go build a road in all the state of Alaska? You said forcefully. There's a lot of roads we need paved right now. Okay, why do you need to, if it, if it takes force and violence, do you need it in the first place? We don't need it through force and violence, but how is it going to get done when it's a necessity for us to drive? Well, it's absolutely force and violence. Your taxes are taken by right, force. She's asking how you're going to do it without that. She realizes yeah, I'm not saying how it, it can be, how money. it's done now. How would we do it without the money? People would create like roads. Corporations would build roads. I mean, it's a fact. We just said there were roads here in Fairbanks before the state came along and said we're going to start building roads. But now that our economy has changed and people have changed, what people do you think will come forward and build our roads? Or just the corporations absolutely would. I mean, economies change it proves even more that we would. Just like Aaron was saying with the Hall Road, I guarantee you that oil companies who have bazillions of dollars and need to get their product to the market would create a way to get that product to the market. Right, and it, uh, in a um, you have to think about like a, a neighborhood. In a neighborhood, they they set up. Um, what do they call those road service areas? Yeah, we have districts. Right. So uh, why do people think that those same people wouldn't put their, their money up to have their own road maintained? And if somebody wants their own driveway paved, like Matt was just mocking, they uh, they go pay to have their own driveway paved. Everybody does it. The first highway across the country was private road. The railroads were private. They bought land and purchased because they made money going back and forth doing it. Sending product and people from New York to California was a profitable proposition, so they created railroads and roads. The state came along after the fact and said, wait, we need to do this so we can take the credit for it. Yeah. It would happen. I mean, it absolutely would happen. If people want something, it'll happen. It, Maybe we don't need five million roads. That might be something we'd find out too. We might find out that such and such road that gets paved every year doesn't need to be paved every year. And some road that has potholes and it's a piece of junk and you don't dare drive on it because it'll ruin your vehicle. Maybe that one would get taken care of instead. And you hear a lot of uh, people pose the question that Matt posed. Well, 
what have you lived in this neighborhood? And the guy at the very end of the road puts up this gate and says you have to pay to go through it. But that's a valid question. You think that there's no alternative means to get someplace? So, sometimes there isn't. Try living in a cul-de-sac. <laughs> you wouldn't build in the cul-de-sac then. Right. I mean, we're using today, we're using what we have right now and saying, well, if everything was the same as what we're doing, how would it happen? We wouldn't have, basically, we wouldn't have a planned economy in the first place, and so things would be totally different. The, the point that I was trying to cheaper. make earlier was that if, I, I, I understand your position that taxes are, are taken by force, but if government would only offer and do things that everybody felt that there was a need or a benefit to, then it wouldn't be, people wouldn't be forced to that's pay taxes. That's not true because that's what they're doing right now, if, Matt. I understand that, but what I'm saying is if people, if the government only participated in endeavors that, that people felt were truly in their best interest. Isn't every endeavor be, they do have a group of people that thinks it's in their best interest? That's how the a, money was taken not, in the first place. What you're talking place. about is something that only is not, group. but that which will never be. It is impossible for government to do that. Government's only way to survive is to grow. It does not. Government does not care what everyone wants. This this true democracy thing is bull. I mean, there's no what you're talking about is never going to happen. There's no such thing. If government only did what everyone felt they needed it to do, government doesn't do that. Government does what it wants to do well, to retain like, power. Just like you were saying earlier, for us. For us, we can say it's a defensive mover, and for them, they say it's aggression. And it's very similar when you use the term democracy, because the difference between democracy and mob rule is a very fine line. There is no difference. Ready for the next call? Once, when, once, once democracy is institutionalized into government, there's no difference. Call, are you there? Hello? Hello. Good morning. Allegedly. Hey, I got... <laughs> Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I went down to the newspaper. I get tired of, you know, the, the lack of news in the, in the so-called newspaper. So I got a stack of stuff together that you'll never see in the newspaper and went down there and told them that I've got 24 years with the Department of Defense and a secret security clearance, and here's some stuff that the public needs to know for the benefit of the country, for your family, your kids. We need to know this. Stuff and have it get out there so we know how to vote, et cetera, et cetera. You know the whole story. Sure. And they absolutely refused to even look at what I had. And I and I said, uh, I I pointed out some of the stuff. And it took me a while to get them to admit that they were printing a bunch of lies and stuff in the newspaper down there. And they would not even look at what I had. And I think you know these people are these people live in this community. And why won't they even? Uh, inform their neighbors, you know, what's going on here, you know? Well, I think the newspaper, well, most newspapers, but this one in particular here, it's basically just a propaganda piece, isn't it? I mean, whatever they're told to print. I mean, if you go... That's and, what he said, yeah. Well, if you look at what they print, what they have their stories on, there's a long line. You can see right where their opinion st sits and right where what they think is important not even what they think is important. It's what they want us to think that is important. What they want us to think about. That's all that newspaper is. Well, it's no the different than any. Yeah, Sam, Sam Bishop told me he, that he was a conservative and he belonged to the NRA. And he never lost that little stupid liberal grin he's got on his face. And I told him, yeah, but by the look of that stupid little liberal grin, I know who you are, you know? <laughs> Yeah, they're, def they're definitely a joke. But it's no—I mean, it's no different than any other news. Well, news, no, it news outlet. I mean, you look but at Fox. So, you, you look at Fox it, News, and when Rupert Murdoch went through all the stuff about, um, you know, what he got in trouble for, not a single word on Fox News was ever mentioned about it. That's because he'd fire him. Well, I understand, but but you know, it's it's the News Miner or Newsweek or Time or any, New York Times. Any, any, any of them. It's no, it's no right different. It's, it's complete. It's it's. They are they're beholden to their to their owners. I mean, if the owner of of uh, oh a, a, any of the local a, a, ABC, the local affiliate, if if the owner of the local ABC affiliate got picked up for uh, 
smashing 10 cars and whatever. I mean, the ABC News is not going to cover that. Hey, our boss today got picked up for smashing 10 cars in a DWI. I mean, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just kind of the... Well, that's the great thing about the Internet. Well, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to go down there. And yeah, the Internet's a highly see. accurate source of news. No, not necessarily all of it, but it does have highly accurate sources of news. I mean, you can go to LouRockwell.com and see stuff that's really going on. There's no phony baloney. It's just, here's what's really going on. Here's real news. You can go, for information, you can go to Mises.org and actually find out real information about real things that are going on. You can go to any of the websites. You can go websites. to Prison Planet and find well, out well, things yeah, that are going some, on. The, the difficulty with a lot of those is, is not the accuracy of the information. It's the completeness of the information. So... Like we were talking about Glenn Beck earlier. Glenn Beck has all kinds of wonderful historical tidbits. It's just all the omissions that Glenn Beck makes when he explains his... Well, you'll notice his, I did not say it, go to glennbeck.com. I understand you didn't. I said but what I'm saying is, is you can, it, it's very difficult to not only discern between, between what these people's opinions are, but discern between what they're telling you versus what they are... are, are Deliberately or indeliberately uh, omitting. Sure, people that have people... agendas. But I mean, you can go to patriotslament.blogspot.com and find nothing but the truth and all the truth. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but? Absolutely. All right, thanks for the call. Here's the next one for you. Caller, are you there? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, answer for the other caller about how the roads would get built and taken care of. If she looks back in the 1800s, look up the turnpike. Authority. It was a private corporation created by the town the road went to, or the town that it went from, or the company that owned the mine that built the road, and the town was just happened to be nearby. And they charged a toll to travel on the road, and that maintained it. And we still have toll roads, but they've kind of changed to where. Our tolls are paid yearly, and they go to the government. Right, even the, gov the government even has toll roads. I mean, they first they steal your money to build it, and then they charge you to go across it. Yeah, they got and one they going to Whittier right now. Yep. Oh, is that one a toll? Oh, you bet it is, and it's expensive too. I built the building in Whittier, and it was it wasn't a, it wasn't pleasant paying that toll. That's for sure. Pretty sure tax money built it in the first place. I know tax money built it in the first place. I know too, because I was on that job. <laughs> we have no, to a, charge you for using your money it's a good point i mean to we just have to just open our mind a little bit and absolutely say so if we don't have this organism this parasite called the state nothing would happen no it still still happen it'd just be private initiative Right, it, different, it would happen in a different way, but everything would still happen. I mean, without the government, we would, could still have medical care. You yeah. could still have cars being built. You would still have roads being built. You would still have supermarkets that produced. You still have farmers that would produce food. Well, the issue that I have with the state being involved in doing all of it is the same as paying somebody else to do the job for you. I mean, you guys own your own businesses here. I'm sure you take more satisfaction at the end of the day by doing the work yourself than somebody else doing it for you. It, it gives it more of a value or perceived value from your point of view to what the work has been done. And when it's the state, you don't have that personal investment and you don't seem to care as much about it. No, that's a good point. When you have... Um... If you, when you have something, when you see in society, if something's given to someone, how do they treat it? It's usually trashed. It's trashed. Especially when they know that when they trash it, they'll get another, they'll get another. Like, and if you've spent your own money to achieve something or purchase something, you treat it pretty well. You don't even want your kids touching it sometimes. I don't let my kids touch anything I own. Well, it's a good point. Well, it's just like, um, if, if you owned a house, so you owned the capital stock, and you gave it to somebody and told them for four years they could have that house and get and run it, run it however, run it down however much they needed to get as much money out of it as they possibly could, 
are they going to treat it the same way as you when you own the capital stock if they just own the temporary ownership of it and get it use it for a temporary amount of time are they going to view it the same are they going to use it the same are they going to respect it the same absolutely not well no and i and and uh, and when a guy gets into office and he's not a dictator or he's not a king when he gets into office for 4 years does he view his tax base does he view his ability, his protege, him and his protege's um, moment to expropriate, is he going to view that capital stock any differently than anybody views anything when it comes to monies and a way to uh, take and so on and so forth? It's not his, and he has two years to spend it. Well, and it, and, and the other issue with that is that um, there, is no, there is no consequence to the decision that they've made. If, right. If... if it's called it being able to externalize the cost. Right, it's just it, like our that, wars. If our war, wars weren't externalized via taxes, we wouldn't be in them. If government officials paid for that war, we wouldn't be there. Right. If if we were in, I mean, you kind of made light of a dictator, but if you were a dictator, you wouldn't be able to externalize that cost to the extent that a democracy is able to do that. Well, if you look if at, you were if you were a dictator instead of an, an elected official for a couple of years, you would be looked at much differently than you're looked at right now. There's far I mean, fewer you, dictator wars than there is democracy. That's right. Wars. You, you make a mockery of a dictator, but I think I'd almost rather have one than have this. Well, that's what I, I wasn't. I don't want to pay forty percent of my money I, in taxes. I wasn't making and 40? I wasn't making a mockery of it. I was saying that I can very well see and understand how dictatorships come about. And if you're a bad dictator, you'll get killed. Forget yeah. about getting voted out. You'll be killed. You get removed from office in a very and, and permanent the planet. way. Right. All, all government um, exists from tacit support. And the more... Um, Participatory it is, the more tacit support it gets, and the more actual actual support it gets. Um, that's one of the reasons that the Nazi regime had such loyalty, such um, such absolute um, patriotism from its people. But and, you look at the willingness of 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 society today to forego long term stability whether it be health, economic, or prosperity, or short-term uh, gadgets, video games, Game. and, and that, fast that's, food. That's created by socialism, though. Well, the, I mean, it's created by a lot of things, but... I think it's absolutely 100% could be pointed to that it's created by socialism. Well, I think look I could at, set uh, that argument up really Jefferson really even said hundreds of years ago... And I know it was said before him. Once they find, once the public finds out they can vote themselves a free lunch, they absolutely will. They don't. All of a sudden, they don't care because supposedly it's coming from someone else. And back to the roads, what we we have to ask ourselves: Okay, is taxation theft? Yes, it's theft. So then we have to ask ourselves: What? How much theft is ethical? Is moral? How much theft is okay? Is theft wrong? Right. That's the fun. That's your limited and smaller government argument. And then, I was just having this argument with a guy. Is theft said, wrong? We, it, right. It, well, we need it to is be... wrong, but it's it's only so theft. Why? It's only are, theft. Are you getting ready to say it's necessary? No. It's only theft to the people who don't want to pay it. That would be everybody would that's be not a recipient. <laughs> that's why socialism is wrong. <laughs> right. This is fun. It's true. You say only those who wants to pay taxes. There's a lot of people who have That's no who problem. Who say they say you, no problem? Okay, do they send in more than what they're supposedly required to send? And even if someone wants to pay does it, it does, does it make it moral? Does it still make does, it does right? Anybody, that they steal from me? Do, does anybody no, not take? No, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you that that if you feel that you shouldn't have to pay, that then that makes it a situation. Uh, 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 that makes it a definition of theft. Do you know but, anybody that doesn't take all their exemptions? Sean Hannity doesn't. He's a good guy. He doesn't? Yeah, because he wants to pay more just because he knows Obama will come get him if he messes up his taxes. Anyways, Sean neither Hannity. here nor there. Yeah, oh Sean. But is theft wrong? So what matter of theft and how much theft is okay? When we say, well, we have to have some theft because we need protection or we need the roads or, you know, we need the cotton pick, so we need slaves. Who's going to pick the cotton? How are we going to build the roads? 
what's moral? How much of it is not? How much how much theft is doesn't equal slavery? If they take so much, okay, we say, well, they were slaves. Why? Because they didn't receive any compensation for their work. So if they take 40% of your wealth or 60% of your wealth, it's not slavery. Well, yeah, because they let you keep some of it. They let you keep some of it. Well, even the slave masters would feed their slaves if they wanted to have a good worker and gave them housing. So we have to ask ourselves what and how much slavery is moral. How much taxation, how much theft is moral? Zero. Thank you. Matt is becoming an anarchist right here on our show. No, not at all. Yes. Ready for the next one? Why, because you want smaller, limited government? Yep, I want a smaller, limited, more limited government. <laughs> because less force is better. Yeah, I want a more flexible government. <laughs> <laughs> I dust mock I you. think we're already bent over all the way. We can't flex anymore. Paul, <laughs> there... are you there? Yeah. How are you doing today? Good. You guys are pretty big truckers in town. I see you all over. Oh, no. Is this going to be that one of my trucks rocked you? Oh, no, no. Oh, no. no rocks, no nothing. I it mean, I'm on, your, I'm on your side. <laughs> I, I believe what you say. I like what you say. The problem is, is, you know, I see you going on Fort Wayne, right, doing government job. Yep. Yet you complain about the government. Now, I was up north, too, doing one of them road jobs. There's actually three of them up there. And the state workers were basically sleeping in their trucks, some of them. They weren't doing anything except basically being in pain and getting in the way. And at least we're getting some road work done with our money that we won't get, we will never get, but at least the private businesses are getting some of that money and spreading it out instead of the government refunding it to the people like they should do. So, no, kind I, of my opinion there. Yeah, you know, can, you, you, you take a little, but, you know, you, you got to understand that's part of it. Yeah, it, go, it there is government sector jobs, and I don't bother myself whether or not I should take it or not because I don't feel like just because it's this government called the United States that steals from me, if Chile called me tomorrow and said, hey, we're building this great big road, would you like to come down work on it. We'll pay you blah, blah, blah. I'd say, sure. I'd go down there if it was profitable. If even communist China called me and said, hey, we're building a new factory for slaves. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but if they said, we're building a new road here and we need road work done, blah, 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 I would absolutely, if it was profitable, go over there and build them a road. He, well, like he doesn't say, look at it as that... hypocritical. He looks at it as an extended tax refund of what he's already paid in. He's just trying well, to get some be of doing it back. It. I wouldn't be getting tax from China. Well, actually, I would get tax well, from China. I'm, once I'm getting it back through the trucking company I work for. I yeah. Mean, basically, if they're going to spend that money instead of giving it to us like they should in the first place and let the private not take it in the first the road, place. Yeah, not take we it. We should, place. you know, be able to get that. And I'd rather see the state spend the money on a road to Nome or wherever, at least expand the system here so there's more opportunity for the people. You know, I, I've I've asked the question myself a couple of times thinking about Josh working on base, but I guess what it comes down to for me is the very act of spending a fiat dollar in the first place is stealing from your posterity. So, how I mean, if you're going to make the argument on moral grounds, you should stop spending money in the first place. <laughs> well, you got to have money to spend. Yeah. Here, I'm cooking a couple of potatoes for the girlfriend, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, you guys have a good day. Thanks for the call, man. I appreciate it. it. Stay safe on that road. I think McDonald's should own all the roads. There's a corporation that could afford to build roads everywhere. Four lanes all the way to every McDonald's. They, <laughs> they would. would. Single, they un, would. single unpaved they would if they needed stop to. signs every 50 feet away from McDonald's. McDonald's is a fabulous corporation. I love them. Walmart would probably lay down some road themselves, I too. Bet they would. <laughs> Absolutely. They could afford to do it. They, they, need, would, to, they need to just have tubes like the bank does to everybody's house. Call, are you there? Without the state, we probably that could me? get that. It is, but you're going to have to hold on because it's top of the hour news. We'll be back in just a minute. All right, welcome back to it. Uh, Patriots Lament, hour two. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see if we still got a caller on hold. Caller, are you still there? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yes, you are. Sorry, I got a little hot on the mic there. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, what's on my mind is, do you know how many people own the Alaska Railroad? One. Sean Parnell. Yeah, the state of Alaska. Yeah. Okay, so who financed the the bridge to nowhere across the Tananaw? Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin, which was another state corporation, am I right? Yeah. Okay, now, who's been surveying the road to Nome for 20 years? State of Alaska. The state of Alaska. But does any of these corporations, do they hire locally in Fairbanks? No. No. So I, I, I don't understand how Fairbanks is like, you know, the third-class city because everybody is rubbing elbows in Anchorage and Juneau and Fairbanks gets forget about again. Well, we Am don't I have right? enough representation to make Fairbanks worthy of such things. I, I, I know. I But, you know, there's actually there's two different corporations in the Alaska Railroad. One part owns all the um, land, uh, like Healy, and uh, they own a lot of land here in Fairbanks, mm-hmm. and that's that and other. Now, when that land... When that bridge to nowhere goes on the other side of the Tanana, who's going to own that land that the tracks are sitting on? Uh, the federal government. The federal government's going to own it. So now you've got a third hand in the in the pie. Am I right? Yeah, and I think what's interesting about that bridge that's going across the Tanana is that it will not be for public use at all. Well, let's see. We're building a bridge to nowhere with hands from Anchorage, financed by the state, and the people of Fairbanks can't cross it. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. Doesn't it, though? <laughs> but but really, what really gets me is the survey crew that's been up doing the road to Nome for 25 years. Have you heard any construction projects on that situation? No, but if we actually started that road, then those guys would be out of a job. Yeah, I don't. I mean, you got to keep things in perpetuate, perpetuity, perpetuity. Otherwise, perpetuity, perpetuity. perpetuity. It's just like the Alaska Railroad. There, the I saw they were whining here just a while ago because the sequester, or whatever, they're going to get some of their federal funding taken away, and they're worried about you know how are we going to survive. Well, if the Alaska Railroad cannot sustain itself on its own business, maybe it ought to go away. There you go. Why does it? I mean, if it has to survive on tax funds, and you know, the Alaska Railroad is in direct competition every day with, so the state is in direct competition with private industry every single day because they are publicly subsidized. So they can go in and say, hey, we'll move your freight for. Obviously not enough to make a profit because they have to be subsidized every year and they lose money every year. And who are they com- competing against? They're competing against the private market who is here. They are absolutely, I mean, there's enough trucking companies, for instance, to move whatever freight needs to be moved. Right. So the state is in direct competition with the people of the state. Do you think that's why a hot dog costs $20 in the Amtrak? <laughs> it might. Mike. But you, like, you get where I'm coming from. They cannot sustain themselves, so the state has to continually give them money because they, they go, <coughs> excuse me, they're broke every year. They lose money every single year. And at the same time, they're in direct competition with the private sector who would move the freight anyways and actually make a profit off of it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, they're talking about the government money and, you know, Sometimes I, it, it just doesn't make sense, and it makes your head kind of spin, doesn't it? Well, just like the bridge, they started that because the federal government appropriated like 40 or $60 billion. Right. And they weren't necessarily ready to start the bridge, but the feds put a timeline on that on that money that they gave them and said, you know, if it's not spent by blah, blah, blah time, we're going to pull the funds. I know because I was at one of the meetings where they were talking about it. So they said, okay, so... 
we have to start this project come hell or high water because we're going to lose this $60 billion. So just go. Do it. Start it. Yeah, so but have did. you heard anything about the bridge in the last year and a half? No, I know that they are working on it, though. They're hauling rock out to it. And I think the bridge beams have come in from Valdez and whatnot. Which, eventually, you know, the railroad is trying to get to Delta, and I think they'll probably try to go to Greeley, or not, yeah, that's where they're going with Greeley. They'll probably try to go to Valdez eventually, and basically just fight more for against the private sector for more freight. Well, you know, the, actually, the, actually, the only person who's made any money off of this has been Brown's Quarry. Yeah, they're doing all right off of it, I think. Well, now it belongs to the Native Corporation. And it has been for a while. Yeah, they did sell a year or two ago. I think yeah. Kiwit um, is the general contractor on that. Right. I'm right. sure they're making some money off of it. Well, I know, but, you know, jobs and opportunity in Fairbanks are... Uh, they're not here on that kind of a sector. I'm kind of down about that. I uh, there should be jobs for the, the local people here, and um, you know, if you're not rubbing that elbows or big corporations in Anchorage, if you're a Fairbanks individual um, in the private sector trying to get a job, it don't work that way. Well, there's actually quite a few local people that are working on that job. I know for a fact. I know sure, truck another, drivers. Yeah, there's quite a few of them. But I mean, the more to the point, what we should be looking at is is the bridge should the bridge exist in the first place? I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, the private sector, if there was money to build a bridge across, because the private sector saw, hmm, if we built this bridge across the town all, we could make a bunch of money going to Fort Greeley or whatever, then they would do it if the state would allow them. But they didn't, and they would never do it because it's a waste of several hundred millions of dollars and then it's going to be locked down where the people that paid for the project in the first place won't even be able to access it well you can access it but you just can't use their bridge right even though it's so, going to have a lane on it for vehicle traffic but i mean it's just like the survey crew that's been serving the road to nowhere in in nome alaska that you know i mean they get an airplane to go out there and spend five months and they come back and that's been going on for 20 years. I don't know if I, you... Sh yeah. <laughs> I but it's Gnome. I mean, it's more like a prison sentence than a than a, than a trip. Yeah, but yeah, they make well, pretty good money off of it. Well, yeah. I mean, they don't even have to live here. They just pack up and go to wherever they're going to go for the winter, and then they come back and start all over again. Yeah. But anyways, thank you much for your show. Yep, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Let's hit the... Oh, wow. No, they hung up. Call, are you there? Hello? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. I think so. Uh, Pogo Mine just built a 50-mile road here the other year. It was built by a Canadian outfit. So um, the roads to uh, Fort Knox and True North was built by the mining companies. Um, we had the old Valdez Trail, all these trails before it became roads, before the Alaska Road Commission. And the RS-2477 back in 1877 or whenever it they started all that. We didn't have cars back then. So trails were what people put in for the past police resistance to get to the mining country and fishing and everything else they had to do. And towns were built at intersections of rivers and stuff. So we didn't have any public dedicated roads out there. And I think if uh, that road, that road to uh, Pogo, for instance, is a per it was quite the feat. I know some guys that uh, were on that job and all the supplies and whatever up there and i could just imagine if the state was actually in charge of building that road it probably they probably couldn't have done it in the first place but well i got a call from the canadian outfit once it said bill do you uh know where i can get a bunch of surveyors we have four months to survey 50 miles of road into the mine i said well try the native corporations they trained some up for their land surveys and it kind of fell apart um the, the road to Nome, if they're building from uh, Manly up to towards Rampart, I believe, and there's a surveying company, Manly Land Surveys. They're in charge of surveying on that portion. I hear they're doing something. I don't know if they're flagging clearing limits, the center. I'm not sure what they're doing. A lot of surveys the other guy saw was environmental stuff they've been doing for years, how the water road's going to go. But I think if they did it right, they'd just, they could put a road and railroad and 
gas line, everything and all in one corridor all the way out, and private companies can join up. And it's a shame the native corporations aren't interested. Well, if you took the government out, we'd have a gas line 20 years ago. We'd have roads all over the place. I mean, we'd have coal the only reason all over you, the place. The only reason we don't in the first place is because the government has to spend 30 years first spending the money, deciding on how they're going to spend more money, and everyone's got to get their their hands in the kettle and say, well, wait a minute, we got to slow down here. We're not going to get enough of this pie. I mean, just like with state and federal projects, when it, with a federal project, I believe that the state government gets gets to keep 25% of all the money that the federal government spends on a on a job in the state. Right, they get in, it's they get indirect. And the right. and from the state to the borough, it, it's a similar situation. If the state um, does a a project that has to have borough involvement for whatever reason, then the well, borough, then they get they get 10 the borough gets 10%. Some of the stuff they do most of the borough roads is built out of private people's pockets and you're controlled by that title 17 and they try to make you build roads at 30 25 and 30 mile an hour speeds when you don't need it i had a client who died says i want to leave five acres to my eight children each and i said sorry you can't do it because you don't have a hundred thousand dollars a zigzag your road across your land and the road's been there for 35 years already they're taking private property rights away through agenda 21 control and are going it through our title uh, title code within the borough, and that's what's very, very bad. The thing Lance has up to restrict the uh, construction material width of the road, we could build a 20-foot wide road two, three years ago, and then he added the extra shoulders on the side, making 24. Well, 20 was good enough for a long time. Why not let us keep 20 or 16 Pioneer? You just put a slower speed limit sign. There's a way to do it. They don't want you to do it. They're using it to control you and your land. But when a man can't leave land to his children, um, something's wrong with the code, and, and it has to change. So I think people that listen to your show and some other groups around town should pile into that borough floor when that stuff comes up for readings and back lands on the one that's trying to get Title 17 a little more realistic. So and, and as far as waiting, I surveyed the Main Street and Illinois Street construction in 1985. It took 27 years to get our federal money. They threatened to take away if your air is not clean enough. Right. Why wait 27 years? That's a half of a lifetime. Who gives a rat's yin yang when you wait that long? <laughs> you so, know, when you, you said know, the law. There's a lot of issues with all these idiots in there and uh, fight them all the time for people for the private property rights. And I sure appreciate you guys having a show. I've only listened to you once or twice, but uh, now I get up earlier and it's, it's worth turning you on. <laughs> and, uh, wow, thank you. Uh, as far as the gas line, I was a head surveyor and I worked six years on the oil line, two years on the gas line we never did. I was a head surveyor on 800 miles. We surveyed it all, core drilled it all. Now they still don't even want to use that data they spent $750 million on before. Well, I was 33 when I was the head of the survey and on the gas line. Now I'm 66. What's that tell you about waiting? No. So there, anyway, uh, people's had it rough in Fairbanks. Uh, we make it. We get by. Uh, it's tough to do. Yeah, in spite little... of the government. Well, Not because that's of right. I uh, played their game, and in the winter I got my unemployment. Uh, it was enough to make my house payments. There wasn't much left for food. So uh, I come home from up north, and my ex-girlfriend had a horse in the freezer and took all the furniture and the chickens and the ducks and everything I raised that year and left and left me a stump to sit on. Well, it took me nine months to eat half a horse, but you know what? I finally paid off my 30-year note on my home, and I'm still here fighting. So there's a typical Fairbanks thing for you. Well, and, yeah. uh, Except for the fact that you still have to pay your property tax. <laughs> and, and, you yeah. ate a, and you ate a horse. I ate a horse, but you know what? I'm still here, and I live, and I survived. And I just ran a few girlfriends off when they found out the horse was in the homemade vegetable soup. <laughs> I heard, I heard horse meat's delicious. I mean, it's it a delicacy is. in France. I heard it's, yeah, sweet, exactly. it's sweeter than cow. A I had your European mushers here in my kitchen and said, Bill, where we come from in Germany, there'd be 24 horses and two beef in the freezer over there at the store. And you know what? There's be two beef hanging there when the horses are all gone. And they meant it because there's too much fat in the beef. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, thanks for the call. The thanks for the call. You know, when he said something about the borough, their Title 17 roads and blah, 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 we need to change it. They're not right and everything. I got to go back to Mr. Jean Locke, well, just, what he and, said about property. And just real quick, when, you know, I, I don't know if it's the same um, gentleman he was speaking of, but when I was on the assembly, we, we, we passed a, an ordinance so that, and and the planning department didn't 
want it, didn't like it, but we pass an ordinance so that when people do have uh, property that they want to split up and and be able to put, you know, give to their kids or whatever, that that they're able to do it and and not have to put in a road or whatever. They can, it's their property, let them sort it out themselves. If they want to put 10 cabins on it or you know, I'm not. I can't remember what the particulars were, but but when I was there, we we passed that so that people could do that. People could, and there was a gentleman who came in and said, "I've got, I'll have to make up the numbers." But it was like 25 acres, and he wanted to give each of his kids like two acres, mm-hmm. and this would allow him to do it. And and we, it, so so you, you can do that. I'm not. I don't know what the process is, but you don't you don't have to build a road to zigzag through it. It's interesting that you have to go in and ask the borough in the first place. Well, yeah, I, I think it's stupid. I mean, don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I think it's, you know, I don't. You're not on the assembly anymore. No, no. But I don't. Th- I don't know why. You know, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the whole deal is with the planning department. But anyway, well, go ahead, Josh. I was just going to. What uh, we started the show out with, when the legislators endeavor to take away and destroy the property of the people, they put themselves in a state of war with the people. So we're not in a state of war with Matt anymore. No, he's good. We're just in a state of war because, you know, like North Korea and South Korea, but the borough. Oh, I see. So it's yeah. not an actual war. It's a state it's of state war. Of war. Right, it's going Kim Jong-un. It's a never-ending crisis. No, they're the Kim jong un So who's uh, going to nuke who? That's all I want to know. Caller, are you there? I'm here. This is Jim and Kenai. Hey, Jim. How's it going, brother? Doing well. I have a question for Matt. Okay. If, he, if he's walking home one evening <laughs> and a bum sticks a, a gun in his belly and says, give me $50, and uh, has Matt just been aggressed against? Yeah. Matt, do you agree? Yes. Okay. If, you, if you'd if you seen that bum there the previous day and you were going to give him $50 anyway, have you still been aggressed against? Uh, yes. yes. Yes, you have. So if you would have agreed to the taxation anyway, you've still been aggressed against because the threat of, the threat of getting shot was still behind the request. So, right, the use of force is still there. If you, if just because you say you, you're, you're, if you're just because you're okay with it doesn't. If you're not okay with it, if at any point you decided you're not okay with it, then what happens? Then you go get to be uh, a little girl in prison. And if you refuse to go to prison, then you get shot. Huh. And then my my other my other thought is, uh, Matt, do you own a home? Yes. Okay. When you bought your home, did you buy title insurance? Yes. You did? Yes. Could you also at the same time possibly buy access insurance? I I guess I don't understand what you mean. Access to your home. Access to your home. Mm. See, would that possibly be a way, one way that we might solve the question of how do we how do we get to our homes without involving, without creating uh, ta- a form of uh, taxation in order to build roads or in order to maintain roads? Yeah. So, so what, what the problem is, is that people who really want the government to do things, which means they want to be able to force other people to pay for things that they want, or they, um, is they say that the market might not solve it exactly to my satisfaction. It's the nirvana fallacy. It won't, it won't solve it exactly the way I want it solved. But just because freedom isn't perfect doesn't mean that it's undesirable, and it doesn't mean the alternative is perfect. But freedom isn't based on aggression, and the alternative is. So I kind of think that kind of settles the question in my mind, because I don't, I don't think you can justify aggression Be say, you know, uh, I, I'm okay with slavery because I want cotton. You know, I, I just don't buy that argument. Oh, no, I think, any, I think anybody who wants to opt out of, of paying uh, taxes should be able to. And then, and then just uh, then they can they can also opt out of any any of the um, services that it provides. But the government prevents competition with itself. Well, but what I'm saying is, you know, you you asked no, the question Jim, about Jim's got taxes. a good point. If you can't compete, then there, then it makes it a mute point. I you mean, private private roads are simply. You know, what is that beeping? Um, probably the FBI. I don't know. <laughs> You're being censored randomly. <laughs> no, nah, it's not random. It's Jim. <laughs> no, absolutely good point. I'm glad that you brought it up. Because, and the main factor is 
Freedom is more desirable, and and just like what you said with slavery, it doesn't matter how if you want the cotton picked or not. Is slavery wrong? Yes. So figure something else out. That's why I was bringing up with taxation of is theft wrong? So if it is, how much theft is okay? If no theft is okay, then we just need to figure something else out. It's you know the the, the lighthouses are a constant are constantly brought up as as one of those public goods that could only possibly be provided by the government, but years they were provided first by private by private co-ops and then they figured hey we can get the government to pay for this we can ex you know the shippers figured out we can externalize our cost onto other people and uh and then they they that's what they, that's what happens but they were they were managed privately first they were all built privately the government doesn't you know every bit the productive portion of the population always pays for every good it's just a matter of whether or not they maintain control and once it gets shifts into the, shifted into the government area they lose control so you no longer have that you no longer have that uh, coordination between i get what i want because i'm willing to pay for it that's how you determine that's how the free freedom determines the alternative uses of scarce resources is the people who are willing to pay decide and the people who aren't willing to pay don't have to pay. And the other part is when the government, by the time the government steps in, they're usually on the at the end of whatever project or whatever is happening, and then they take it over and then take credit for the whole thing. Yeah, that's yeah, that's how it was back when they were grabbing back when they were grabbing authority. Now that they've now that they've justified had fifty hundred years of justifying all this, they they start things, but. They they start them badly. <laughs> okay. I right. Government Thanks, only guys. produces bads. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the bye call, bye. man. Appreciate it. Uh, call are you there? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I think it's something of a misnomer to even talk about the government being the one who builds the roads. It wasn't too long back, just a few years ago. We went out to a spot where they had it all staked out for a road to be built, but it was us who built the road. We went through, and we cut down the trees, and we dug out the roots, and we rented a bulldozer and bulldozed the stumps. We did it all ground up, but they didn't build the road. It's no. people who build roads. That's a good point. I mean, that's exactly right. The, the state itself doesn't do anything. They hire contractors. There's private contractors that go out and build roads. It's private contractors that build housing for the army. It's private contractors who make the weapons, like when they say the state goes to war. But what gun does the state manufacture? What bullet does the state manufacture? What road yeah. does the state actually create? They don't. The private citizens tank, actually do all the work themselves. Jet. So let's get rid of the middleman who takes a large cut and we have to end up paying that middleman for the rest of his life and he lives high on the hog the middleman lives high on the hog all of his life right when you're out there making a wage building the road for the state you usually have a few state guys there that are from you know department of transportation or whatever and they're overseeing everything to make sure that you're doing your job right they don't touch a shovel they don't do anything, but they get paid way more than you do, and they get paid year-round. And when they retire, they get that pay for the rest of their life. They get the best benefits of anyone, and they actually don't do the work themselves. All right, back in a minute, bottom of the hour news. Uh, nothing I love better than banjos and gunshots in the morning. The sound of both mixed together. Anyway, uh, back to the show. Let's see here. We're going to take the hotline. Caller, are you there? Hello. Hello. Uh, this is uh, Aaron and Josh's friendly neighborhood FBI informant. Oh, how's it going, Ronan? How are you guys? <laughs> Pretty good. I uh, just, you know, it's been a couple minutes now since the topic came up, but I wanted to bring up the, an interesting story in McCarthy, Alaska. A couple of years ago, probably 10 or 12, and you guys might know this, one of the bridges, or the bridge, washed out. The state had the option to build a new one, and the town voted to make it just a walking bridge. So the state put in a walking bridge at the end of McCarthy Road. And then a local gentleman who owns most of the heavy equipment around there put in two private bridges, one bridge over the Kennecott River and one bridge over the McCarthy Creek. He charges a toll to get over. It works fine. 
And the irony of it is that the state now has to pay him to get their vehicles over into McCarthy and up to Kennecott Mine because they're doing some reconstruction of the, the mine up there. But I thought it was an interesting microcosm of what you guys are talking about, <laughs> about how it can happen if there's a need. Yep. That's awesome. That's even better that he's sticking it to the state for it. Exactly. I can barely hear you guys, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Oh, yeah, we hear you real good. Cool, cool. Coming in loud and clear. Well, I know you guys got a lot to get to, so all, I just all, we're, to all we really want to know, Ronan, is where you're taking us to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I'm on daddy duty today. All right. Well, good for you. Thanks for calling in, man. Appreciate it. All right. Take it. care, brothers. Later. Call, are you there? I am here. Good. What you got on your mind? Hey, uh, I, I remember when I was a kid in front of our house in, in Brazil, we would uh, cover all the potholes because we didn't even have a car, but we would cover pot, potholes with gravel, so it would look nice. We don't have that junky road in front of our house. You know, the government would do it. We'd do it ourselves. And then I, I went to Bolivia and uh, was working there. And this little community and government there is very small, so, uh, you know, and uh, what people do, they would get together and they they would go with machetes and clear the, the runway so the airplanes would come in and they reap the benefits of their own work and they, the government would do nothing. So if people would, uh, don't have the government, people would do, even without resource, like in Bolivia, they didn't have any resource, but they would have their arms and they would go together and, and do the work need to be done. Yeah. And, uh, the other thing I want to talk about, uh, just for a call more, I don't know if you guys heard that the president said that tyranny is impossible here in the United States because we are the government. I want yeah. to see what you guys think about that. Yeah, I read that uh, yesterday. I, I think it was yesterday. I heard it on the news. I don't remember where I heard it, where he says uh, not to worry about him being a tyrant because it's impossible because the people are the government. We are the government. Which is a total fallacy. I'm not the government. None of us are the government. We've proved that over and over. If you were the government, then you could go jump in a state bulldozer and go use it on your property if you wanted to. Or you could jump into a borough pickup. But no, you would be arrested immediately and thrown into jail. If you were the government, you could walk into a jail without being searched or given an ID or whatever and just say, yeah, I'm going to come in here and look at one of my prisoners. Well, they're not your prisoners. They're the state's prisoners. They're the government's prisoners. You are not the government. If I was government, I could just walk across the river right here and go to that crappy building that's the borough and just walk in at any time and go into any office I felt like because I'm the government. No. Fallacy. Total fallacy. Was he still there? Did you hang up on him? No, I yes, didn't. I... Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's how I have it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, man. Ready for the next one? Yeah. Let's do this. Hello, are you there? Hello. Hello? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Ken, now. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't know Matt was our earlier one that called in. Um, the guy called about uh, the road in McCarthy. Well, that was built in 1939 or something or prior to that. By The uh, the railroad was put in to, to go to Kennecott. They built that road, and it became a road later on. And so now a right-of-way, 50 feet wide each side of center line all the way to McCarthy. That was built by, out of private pocket, and there's a nice book called The Copper Spike that tells you all about the construction of that road. And then, Matt, when you were on the assembly, that 2012-11 about the leaving it to your heirs, that, that never went through. It was rewritten and withdrawn by Natalie, and Michael rewrote one 2012-14 pass, which changed the road uh, construction materials and, and with requirements, if you want, going into a particular subdivision. Nothing was ever passed about uh, your heirs leaving land to people. That, that that didn't ever go through. It was withdrawn. And the new one, because when they went to the borough attorney, talked to them, things happened, and they tried to make it fair for everybody, not just people that was leaving land to their children. So, Matt, you're incorrect on that one, but uh, I sure liked you when you were on the assembly. Oh, thanks. Well, and, and after I got done, Natalie texted me and said that it got – it was – it was sequestered. I, I think it still pa- <laughs> it's, it passed, but they but there was some change made to it. There was an amendment made to it, so it didn't it didn't follow what the original intent was. So I apologize. I didn't mean to be misleading. I was just it, it, 
I, I just couldn't remember the details of it in my mind, but I, I did remember that the that that topic and that that uh, ordinance did come up at, at the time when I was on the. It did, and the powers of be changed it all around, and then at the last minute, Mr. Davies threw in there. They had to add the fire service areas. The, the fire trucks are going up uh, sky ridge and areas now with road grades way over 10%, and uh, they don't even want to go over road over 8%, which would be to borough code. So I have a real problem with the issue of the powers of be there at the borough and the, the whole Title 17 code and all the code laws they're creating on people, like building setbacks. Why can't you build your property line? They have road houses. The line goes right in between the buildings. If you don't want to hear your neighbor go to the restroom, uh, build further away. But uh, they, they're denying loans to people, and you've got to replant stuff because their house is eight feet from a property line instead of ten when they create these front side and rear yard setbacks. And it's, it's crap like that that um, bother me. And uh, anyway, I could talk forever about it, and you have a yeah, good show. Well, so. the, the, Thanks. The borough's in a state of war with people. Oh, you... You you think going to the assembly is frustrating, man? I had to go to a I had to go to a a, a planning commission hearing, and that was just the worst. I mean, there on the on the assembly's worst day, it didn't it didn't come close to what the what the the um, planning commission meeting did to people. And I was like, wow, this guy this guy was trying to sell his house, and he had a contingent he. Had, he was trying to buy another, sell his house, and then buy another house. And the purchase of his of his new home was contingent on selling his old house. Well, they had it. It, it had been surveyed when it was built. It had been resurveyed when they when it, he was the third owner of this house. It had been surveyed twice. Then when this third survey came through, they found out that his house had been built like two feet over over a line or whatever. He didn't build it. He bought it that way. It didn't get caught like the first, you know, or, or be found out or whatever. It wasn't like he caused this mm-hmm. problem. And then he had to go in there and de- and deal with the planning commission to. You to, didn't build that. To to <laughs> to be able to to be able to um, sell his house. I mean, they were really. Go- I mean, and this guy had to go in there and just. It's, it was just people uh, with arbitrary power deciding on what he can do with his private property. Well, it's just like Dick Durbin saying that our rights aren't absolute, but his laws are. Well, there was, his he, people. He, he was it's trying to get in there and, and get a variance so that he could sell it through the bank. I mean, you know, it, it's a, it was a right, but the bank won't do it because of the borough. The borough says no, so the bank's got to follow those rules, right. more arbitrary rules and arbitrary power. But it was just, I mean, it was. And they're just truly, other people, right? Other gods on the planning commission, or were they human? Apparently. Yeah, I'm not sure. Exactly. Just other humans. Built in our image. So what you know, gives plural. them the right, another they're, man, to tell you what you can do with your property? They're appointed, Josh. By they're that's appointed. how they get their tacit support. That's how we already exactly. went through they're that, appointed. right? Appointed. So they're your appointed. your dictator um metaphor was actually the more favorable one. I yeah. think so. If I were dictator, I'd be like, go away and bother me with real problems. Give this man what he wants. Let's hit the hotline. Man, All right. There's people on there. No. Oh, wow. They're really calling in. Caller, are you there? Hello. I wish we could Hello. get some hate callers. They Hello. Are. Hello. Go ahead. All right. Am I on? Yes. yes. What is your name? What's up, fellas? <laughs> Andy. Go Andy ahead. Long. <laughs> uh, I was calling to what you were talking about the first hour about the state having its power and like building roads and such. And private sector could do all that, which they could, and they've done before. They do now. The private sector does it. The The private sector does it now. Yeah. What about what I was thinking of is national defense. Without the state, how do we protect? Say there is no state. We're just a nation. How does it organize to defend our private properties of the nation? I don't know. How did the colonists reject the British government and throw them off? Yeah, because when the British government was flying overhead, dropping bombs, they had they had who an gave, easy. Who gave the state the gut? The they had they air, had an easy time who, with dealing who with that. Who created the airplanes that the states flying? The state did. True. Came from the private sector. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the whole. That's where the states. The state relies on that. Well, without us, you wouldn't be protected. Bull crap. We need protection from the state. The state's the one that's going into people's homes and killing people. 
The FBI is the one that breaks down people's doors and shoots them and says, oops, wrong place. Oh, this one's the drug house? Oh, let's go over here. <laughs> I mean, right. who's who's creating the problem with North Korea right now? Is North Korea? If there was no United States government sitting in South Korea going, neener, 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 the North Koreans wouldn't be doing anything. Who set up North Korea in the first place? The state at the end of World War II created the, the DMZ, the 52nd parallel or 53rd. 52nd parallel, whatever the parallel line is there. The state created that in the first place, causing the conflict, creating the conflict. So we'll have perpetual conflict. Because as long as you have conflict, you need the state to protect you. If there's no states warring against each other, I mean, how many people just get up and decide, oh, I'm going to go uh, take over, kill, whatever? No, it's always states. Hey, how do you pro- Always how do under you the profit? pretense that without right. the states being able to war against each other, that we would war against ourselves. Right. We would be killing each other if it wasn't for the states killing each other. <laughs> it's a farce. How the, many guns are in the United States anyways? The, the true answer to your question, Andy, is, um, is answered with insurance. If you had uh, free competing insurance companies that provided uh, security, that would answer the, the question for a national defense. Here's another interesting point. And, I don't, we don't really have enough time to get into that. You should call back next week and ask the question again, and we could really get into it, because that's a topic I really want to talk about. But one of the interesting points is, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. That's because you're sucking on those lounges. Is it? That's because your, your train isn't owned by the state. <laughs> <laughs> right, otherwise it'd be driving, right? It'd be subsidized, at least. <laughs> I totally lost what I was going to say. Private the the private sector could absolutely defend itself. What Aaron's talking about with insurance companies, we've talked about that. When uh, Robert Murphy was on, that was the whole two hours was about the insurance companies. You could buy insurance for protection. Communities could buy insurance for protection. There'd be competing insurances that would decide whether or not you were going to go with them or with someone else. And it would be cheaper than the 40% I pay in, or 50 or 60% we pay in taxes every year. It would be far cheaper. And they couldn't force you to use them. And if you decided you didn't need them, you wouldn't use them. But apparently, I mean, we basically when you decide that you need the state to protect you or you need the state to build your roads, you need, you're basically saying, we are Neanderthals, and we need these glorious gods like Dick Durbin who are so much more brilliant than we are, to make economies happen, to plan economies, plan wars, plan our lives, plan everything we do, because we're just not quite smart enough to do it ourselves. Without this state, we'd still be living in caves, rolling rocks around, trying to figure out how we could build a rock cart or whatever we would be doing. Right. If you had had competition in that market, if there was multiple insurance companies uh, insuring for protection. One, some of the more interesting points is, are uh, you still on there, Andy? Um, well, I, He's I, gone. I, okay, he's gone. Well, if the, if the state, um, let's say that you had somebody steal right now, okay? The state really doesn't have a vested interest to go recover the stolen loot. And if they don't recover that stolen loot, is there any indemnification? Do they are they liable? Do they pay for that? No. An insurance company would be liable for that, so they would have a much uh, stronger interest in recovering the stolen loot, or or at minimum bringing that person to justice. It's actually in the benefit of the state to have injustice go on to at least to a degree to justify the need for them. Yeah, I think you'd have a much more efficient. Um, security agency in the free market and and just like you have um like insurance companies now reward people for good driving behavior so on and so forth or if, or like in a home you you can get cheaper insurance for having an alarm system or a safe well the the supreme the state in the form of the supreme court has said that officers aren't even obligated to protect you right um we have zero interest With, in doing it. The, the idea that right now, I mean, you know that an insurance company will give you perks for being more secure. So 
the idea that an insurance company would disarm people is absolutely ludicrous. In fact, there would be absolute unrestricted ownership of um, weaponry. Um, and people you'd probably have a lower premium if you took a gun safety no, course. No, exactly, and, exactly. And, and that's own several. That's Han, Hans Hopp home. makes that point that you you could get lower premiums from going to um, specialized schools that taught you how to be a, a proficient combatant. I'd only have to pay like a dollar a year. <laughs> because you have so many kids with guns, or <laughs> but well, you, wh- whereas the masters. since the state relies on the monopoly of the use of force, it is it constantly is trying to disarm its population. Which you see that in history of all states trying to disarm their population, so they can have the monop. It's not to kill their population. Of course, that's inevitably what happens. But it's the control. It's it's the control in the to keep the monopoly on the use of force. Well, it, incre- if, it increases their necessity to the general public. Right. The, right. The, so in a free competing um, insurance based uh, protection agency, you would actually have a much well, more armed country. But in a few short years, this country would be so armed, it would be bristling from one side to the other. And then another thing that would happen in the pub in the private sector, when you brought up, you know, someone getting thieved or mugged or whatever. Today, you see videos all the time or whatever, it's in the news, someone gets mugged and there's 15 people standing there watching. The guy going, ah, help me, help me. And people just stand there and watch and they're like, where's the cops? People don't step in to do anything because they don't, well, for one, they're scared because if they step in and knock out the thugs, when the cops do show up, they'll arrest the people that stop the thuggery. Aaron and I have witnessed that ourselves when we stopped people from that were stealing our vehicles we were told flat out that's not your job go home and nobody nobody would stay with an abusive insurance company uh, or or an aggressive insurance company they would make you more liable so if you had an insurance company that you know some of the arguments you might get is well if it was these privately competing they would get out of control i mean of course you would think that because you see the state doing that but nobody would stay with an aggressive insurance company it would it would make them liable and nobody would stay with an insurance company that aggressed on that was aggressive to them. I mean, you definitely wouldn't have um, the monopoly of force wouldn't be there. Like now, if uh, some FBI agents burst into this um, studio and drug us out, and they're punching and kicking us, and one of us accidentally kicked them as they were throwing us, we would go to jail forever for assaulting an officer because only one entity is allowed to use force that you wouldn't have those threats of violence in a in a free market um a free market uh the monopoly on violence would be gone for the first place right and when you saw someone getting mugged because you weren't worried about someone arresting you when you stopped the mugger you would absolutely go stop the mugger mugger your whole the whole mentality of the people would be completely different Right, law would be definitely flipped around. Um, it would be it would be something undesirable to be an outlaw. Where now, uh, it's the other way around. You wouldn't want to be outside the law because the law would protect you. Now it's the other way around. The law oppresses you because of the monopoly of force. And it's absolute. And it's arbitrary. And it's absolutely arbitrary. Let's take the hotline, huh? Let's go ahead then. Okay then. Thanks for the call, Andy. Camo. Hey guys, what's going on? Hey, what's up? Oh, this is Abe. Yeah, so, five yeah, I, 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 uh, I like the, uh, uh, I like where Aaron started to go with the whole uh, protection, you know, things. Uh, Andy's call is super interesting because it seems like a lot of people always call, and that's like their, that's like their trump card that they believe of why we need the government. And I, I think that it's really interesting that if you actually talk to, uh, if you go talk to some uh, well-trained military guys, I'm not talking about guys who are. Uh, um, I'm not talking about the guys who are, you know, the the grunts, so to speak, but guys who are, like, trained special forces and stuff like that, most of them will tell you that um, if if it was, if if, if there was a, a private entity taking care of this, A, there would there, there'd be more competition, which you guys already mentioned, and B, there is no monopoly on force, so if you're worried about a, uh, if you're worried about a private um, uh, group taking over, First of all, if they don't have monopoly on force or on currency, how are they going to feed themselves? Oh, well, we're just going to come steal all our food. Nope, not going to happen. And it's just, it's just, it's just crazy to me to, to, to hear, you know, ridiculous arguments about how, um, you know, well, we, we need the government to protect us. It's like if we didn't have a government, we'd probably be so well protected. I mean, it's like Aaron just mentioned, 
everyone would have a gun. Everyone would actually be forced. I was to thinking work. more like rocket launchers, missiles. I said I'd have a yeah. Too. yeah. I would have a chainsaw mounted on the bottom of my M4 camo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean... It's Which they did make one of those recently. Well, think about the, the whole thing with uh, the people, like you're saying, that say, well, we have to have them to protect us, and blah, 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 what would we do without? And yet those same people, when they're driving down the road, if a cop pulls in behind them, what do they do? Are they Do they look in the mirror and go, all oh, right, I'm safe? No, they're like, oh, man, what did I do Am wrong? I doing something wrong? Even if the lights aren't on, they're going to look at their speed, they're going to look around, like, I'm going to see... Because <laughs> they're scared. Yeah. The, the force that. that's there to protect them. They're scared right. of their own protector. Right. Yeah. Th- basically, the- basically, if you look at the government and you look at their monopoly, you know, their, their monopoly on force, coupled with their monopoly on taxation, and the fact that they that they, you know, that they control the money supply, and, and they're the arbitrators in their own disputes. Exactly. I mean, all of those things make it. That's that's where the, that's 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 where the harm to the to the populace comes from. It's not from any one of those things. I mean, okay, North. North Korea right now. Uh, I got in an interesting discussion with somebody the other day. They're like, "Oh well, what do you think is going to happen?" I mean, they have a million men army. It's like, yeah, but if they go to war in about three weeks, they're going to run out of gasoline, and their entire million man army is going to be walking around. They're, nothing's going to happen. So they have a giant use of force, but they have no resources to back it up. I mean, the, the exact same thing would happen here and here in America. If if you can't, if you have no, if you have, if you try to claim a monopoly on the use of force. But you were unsuccessful to fund that. It doesn't matter how much force you have; you're going to run out pretty quickly, and you can't feed your guys. Right. And the other thing is, it would be uh, competitive, and so oh, yeah. the price for protection would go way down. What What gets me is people can't understand that a tax funded protection agency is a contradiction in terms. Oh yeah. How can you have a tax funded protection? You can't. It's it, it, it just turns tyrannical. Well, it's tyrannical in the first place. They have to steal to right. protect. So to protect your property, they have to steal your property. It's an oxymoron. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's it's just it's just crazy. I I, I honestly, you know, sometimes I hear callers calling and, and they'll mention different things. I my answer to them would be just do some reading. Go, you know, I mean, what? It, no. It's, whenever, whenever, you know. Uh, no, no offense to Matt, but I could uh, when we when we when we had the when you guys had the had the call uh, the call in from you know Richard Mayberry the one time there's there was there were some questions that were asked that are very basic simple questions that just a little bit of reading and you'll come up with an answer that will blow your mind and it, it, it's when you begin to read and you understand and you turn the brain on and start connecting things logically. A lot of these things just become such arbitrary, um, arbitrary questions that all they do to, to, to a person who has read it, they just they, they just infuriate you because you, because it goes to their mind. It says, "Come on, guys, why are you not reading? Maybe you don't deserve liberty." You know. Don't worry, I'm not offended. <laughs> you, you can't offend me. <laughs> all right, you're man. you're awesome, man. I just uh, anyway. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Let's see, we got just a couple minutes. Let's see if we can blow through a couple of these people. And... Not them. Call are you there? Not them. Call there. Hello. And not them. Hello. Hello? And not them. Nope. They're all gone. They Bang. gave up on us. They didn't. They know it's four minutes to the top of the hour. Well, this is the most phone calls we've ever gone through in the history of the show. Well, it's because people enjoy having Matt on here. Yes, Matt. I thank you. Again I wouldn't for say coming. that. <laughs> Hanging out with Matt is always a guess. Why? You Why you got to patronize me? <laughs> we got another call. We do have a caller. You want to call? Sure. All right. Call are you there? Yeah, this is Bill. How you doing? Hey. I just wanted to call in and remind people you've done a wonderful job today for for a couple of hours in talking a lot of theory, which which is what you guys are good for. You're educating folk. That's good. But until people are willing to actually act on things, they won't they won't become free. And I don't think that the group of people we've got to quit thinking this group think. You know, it's like some people think. If only other people would pay taxes, I could have this for free, and we call them liberals. But we also got conservatives who say, if only enough people would resist the government, we could change things. I don't think that's proper either. Each individual can be free. I know, because I am free. And if you want to say I'm only relatively free compared to you, okay, that's fine. But relatively, I'm free. I'm building a road from the Catalina River. To Minto, because I want to. Nobody's told me no yet. I'm just kind of 
it's only like 25 miles instead of like 100 or so if I drive on the highway. So I'm just going to cut me a road or a minto because I want one. People can do what they want to do, and they can do it individually or in small groups, and they can be free. They stop paying taxes. Starve the beast. These things can be done. All right, but the, the really hearts and hard. the minds play a bigger role than I think you're giving credit for there. Uh, it, like I said last show here, that 250 years ago, we wouldn't even be arguing the divine right of kings. We would all just take that for granted, and uh, that was changed in the hearts and minds. It, the revo oh, the revolution, I, I believe uh, the I statement know, that, the what's his name said? No, he's, he started with the, I'm lost here. No, you, the individual liberty is what it comes down to. There's there's no group liberty. There's no collective liberty. You have to be free. I, I'm You're basically saying, saying the action is is thought. I mean, and thought is action. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I grant you that. But my point is, every individual is going to be responsible ultimately to individually become more free. We become more free when we read. That's the beginning of it. When we start educating ourselves and when we can really define our terms, okay? Yeah. And we can become more free by not paying taxes. Refuse to pay them. And I don't mean openly and blatantly, or you'll go to prison. But you can each look at individual things where you can say, I'm not going to do this anymore, so I don't have to pay taxes. I'm not going to go to a public park and pay tax to be there. I'll go camp in the wilderness instead. And hey, now that I'm out here in the wilderness, wow, there's a lot of food here. I think I'll just harvest it. Right, but uh, isn't it more ideal to change um, hearts and minds collectively and not everybody go move out into the woods because it becomes Again, so I, undesirable I think here? I think that your, your thinking is fallacious. You never change hearts and minds collectively. You're only going to do it individually. Even over this radio program, it's an individual growth that's occurring if anybody hears you it's because you spoke to them and they you know, you know what i'm saying so i'm yeah, not, not against using mass in, media right but i'm saying individual people have to find ways to stop paying taxes all right thanks that for the call uh and we're not, at the top of the hour top here, of the so hour we're not trying to cut you off check we'll, us out at uh, patriots lament blogspot.com we have a new facebook page patriots lament on facebook so go there and for something i don't know um, Radio Free Fairbanks on the YouTube channel. Thank you again, Mr. Want, for coming in. and Pressing buttons. Pressing buttons. The right. face made for radio, hey, literally. Exactly. <laughs> All right, you guys See have you guys a good day. Week. And up next, uh, Health Talk. Health Talk.